So it's my pleasure to introduce Warren Carter. All right, um, the first part of this lecture is going to be on architecture and public art, some of the things that have inspired me and excited me. This lecture is a subjective look at the dance between art, architecture, and glass. I'm not an architect, nor am I an art historian or a critic. I'm an artist who has spent much of his career working with his three passions of art, architecture, and glass. The respective worlds of these three are enormous. Therefore, my focus here is uh, only on a few of the transformations that have occurred from about mid-century till now. This first image that we're looking at is the uh, Crystal Palace by Tom Paxton, in, uh, done in 1851, and is often, I think, credited as uh, inspiration for a lot of architects, uh, particularly those that like to work in glass. This next is a, a little, wonderful little building uh, done uh, for the Workman Pavilion exhibition of 1914. Uh, and it also has influenced a number of artists. And uh, those of you that uh, know London, uh, this is maybe a, a mini gherkin, that piece that the Foster Parton partners did. And glass block was one of my original inspirations when I had that uh, vision of, uh, of working with larger architectural glass walls. And so this one, uh, done in 1931 in Paris, is uh, kind of meaningful to me as well. I don't think I could talk about this without mentioning glass houses. And Mies van der Rohe is often considered the father of the modernist architecture. And he gave us this refined glass box. The Farnsworth House, built in 1951, located in Plano, Illinois, is one of the most famous examples of modernist residential architecture and was pretty unprecedented in its day. The Farnsworth House is known to many as Mises' Glass House. It was the result of a challenge that he had undertaken with the American architect uh, Philip Johnson. In 1961, Philip Johnson, speaking at the Columbia University School of Architecture about the Glass House, recalled a conversation with Mies in which he had stated, I pointed out to Mies that, the building, that building a glass house was impossible because you had to have rooms, and that meant solid walls against the glass, which ruined the whole point, to which Mies responded, I think it can be done. However, taking up his own challenge, Philip Johnson produced his version of the glass house uh, a year earlier in uh, New Canaan, Connecticut. These two houses, and this is uh, uh, Philip Johnson's house here, these two houses helped to usher in a new era of expanded use of glass in architecture. Visually, however, uh, this new use of glass actually limited creativity somewhat by focusing on glass's ability to create an illusion of not really being there at all. It merely created an environment barrier for heat and humidity and allowed natural light to come into the space. Uh, jumping ahead uh, to the current era, uh, we've, um, we find that glass is being used in architecture even more than uh, in the modernist period. It is in the last 15 years that the full potential of glass in architecture is beginning to be revealed. It has produced a new language of light. In fact, the new aesthetic has evolved, which uh, shows a shifting away from the modernist movement, uh, the uh, pursuit of invisible walls, to contemporary architects uh, investigating the constructing of, uh, with light uh, through the use of translucent, opaque, colored, and yes, even transparent glass. Klaus Kata uh, created this concert hall west of uh, Vienna. It illustrates the use of translucent glass to give shape and substance to the space. This announcement of glass walls uh, is in direct contrast with the modernist idea of using glass as an il illusion of having no walls at all. Swiss architects Herzog and de Meron are, um, are pioneers of the new approaches for architectural facades. In their work, they often play with opacity, transparency, and translucency on the surface of their buildings. This three-story building, clad in glass, has been silkscreen printed with photographs. The silver hues have lightness and transparency and are very engaging in their fritted glass surface treatment. Herzog and de Meuren's Brandenburg Technical University Library in Germany has terrific interplay with transparency and translucency. In the day, uh, the library appears to be opaque. The variegated patterns appear to be abstract, but in reality it is a collage of the letters of the alphabet, providing a playful context for the library. 
At night, there's a whole different look, and it becomes almost transparent. Will Alsop, uh, architects, has created a dynamic gesture with this highly visible building. The curtain wall employs 17 distinct types of glass panels, windows, and sprandles. Um, the panels are silkscreen printed with 30 colors. The Dutch-based architectural firm UN Studio used dichroic film to uh, create this exciting facade. The dichroic discs are lit with LED lights at night. Montreal architect Hal Ingsberg has created a space with bold, transparent, multicolored glass. It is a powerful vista both day and by night.